Good morning, everyone. Sabotage from DPSHQ here. Uh, I've had someone ask for an Earth build for a Druid. So we're starting to level one. We power level to 50, and I just want to show you where we're at. Um, we're going to jump into a Vault Sigil quickly here so you can see the gameplay and the loop. And then I'll take you through exactly what we're doing on the leveling side of the build and how to make the leveling curve a little bit easier, the spirit curve a little bit easier so that you're not running out of spirit constantly, and how you can start to use Pulverize uh, as a build for the Druid in Season 3. And this was a lucky pick because we get a couple of... Now you can see here, Spirit's holding up pretty well even though we're pulverizing left, right and center. That's part of our Paragon board that's helping us do this. Uh, and there's a specific way that I would say to level this build because you don't want to be running out of spirit constantly. Uh, we're using Earthen Bulwark <coughs> to try and just make sure we stay a little bit tankier. We're using Trample to build up a bit of spirit and make us unstoppable. We're also using Blood Howl to keep up our spirit and make us uh, shapeshift because shapeshifting will give us some extra power. And you'll notice that I'm using Petrify, which is for just a get out of jail free card to stun everything that's in the way like so. So you can walk through just in case you get a whole bunch of people around you and you really, really urgently need to get yourself out of a specific room. But you can tell here, even at level 64, uh, we are starting to really build up quite well. 65 now. Um, I am copying a couple of hits here, you can see. Again, you guys know I like to play very, very aggressive and run myself straight into things. Uh, but even while doing that, we are still surviving extremely well. And you can see our spirit costs. Even though we don't have much spirit cost reduction, resource generation or anything along those lines on this build just yet, you can see our spirits holding up fairly well. Because as we kill things, we will get spirit back. So once we start hitting the later levels and once we start building into an end game build, we will be changing these Paragon boards around. But the way I've got it built here for you guys right now, is a way that you can run around like this in vaults, slap things around, just to be able to level very, very quickly and get yourselves up to higher levels before we start to go into that end game build. And I can tell you now that end game build is going to probably be hitting for millions upon millions. We will be one-shotting a lot of things. We've got a son of Malphus here, so let's just see what we can do to him. sake of the video um, you can see survivability wise we're surviving very very well but for the sake of this video and just to run through so we can get out of here and we can go to the build itself I'm just gonna start running through here I'm not killing everything I'm not opening everything we are just doing this so that you can see how this build works we'll get into the final room these guys out of the way the main idea behind this is you want to keep killing things to get your spirit on kill you want the shockwave aspect so that every time you pulverize it goes straight forward and kills everything in its way Gotta wait for the chest to show up. And we'll just finish this up really quickly. Now, on this leveling build as it is right now, you're also gonna notice something else, which is, I don't have any glyphs leveled up at all. I've only just started. 
we're leveling Fang and Claw. Uh, which we put at the beginning just for damage, because at the beginning of the leveling, that's what we want. We want a lot of damage, we want a lot of speed, we want to be able to speed run these dungeons, get through and start leveling really, really fast. <laughs> now, the way this build works, let's jump through and I'll start going through everything. Seneschal, uh, very, very simple, flash of adrenaline with duration tactical as normal, fortify so we can get our fortify up, because later on we will do more damage with fortify. And then Tempest with Arcing to hit more people, Resource to help us with our Spirit, and Safeguard which is going to give me a little bit of DR. It's just basically what I'm using on every build at the moment because I don't really have any further idea on how to use this Seneschal and I'm not getting any of the unique stones. Um, moving on to the next part, we were lucky enough to drop a Vasili's Prayer. Uh, you will drop this from Varshan, I think that uh, Gregor might do it as well. We're using that at the beginning just so that Werebear skills fortify us, that's what we're using to build up our fortify. Um, I've thrown on this and thrown on when you fortify earth skills gain two ranks So our earth skills like pulverize will gain two ranks You're gonna notice that my gear here only the ones that are favorite have got stuff that I want everything else is just something that I've thrown on So the gloves were in the right area attack speed overpower damage ranks to pulverize and pulverize is now an earth skill We want to make uh, as many things built around this earth sort of platform that people are asking about so everything's gonna be an earth skill Pants, nowhere near what I want them to be. It's just armor while in werebear form and some barrier stuff. Boots, nowhere near what I want them to be. I'd like movement speed, essence cost reduction, and I'd probably put something like ghost walkers on here. The weapon, however, is decent. Uh, not the best, but it's decent. You are going to want a staff because later on in the Paragon board, it's based on your crowd control to enemies damage that will give you some multiplicative damage. But here we've got critical strike damage, overpower while in werebear, core skill damage, and damage to stunned and Pulverize creates a shockwave for the shockwave aspect. I'm using the Mother's Embrace so that we get a little bit more resource coming back to us at the beginning, and I recommend that you do the exact same. This is gonna help out with your spirit level curve, and it's gonna make sure that you don't just keep running out of spirit after hitting two Pulverizers. I was also lucky enough to drop a Hunter Zenith. I believe that this was from Gregor. Uh, Hunter Zenith will give you some quick shift, which is more damage, your critical strike chance, which you want. Uh, when you shapeshift into a werewolf, your next non-ultimate werebear skill costs no resource. So when you do a blood howl, you can pulverize for nothing. And then when you use your pulverize, your next werewolf skill will heal you, which is great because that means your blood howl will heal you as you're moving alongside. And then I've just thrown this one on here, which gives me some crushing, crushing earth damage reduction. And I wanted that movement speed more than anything else because this thing is so slow at the beginning. So slow. I hate it. But we're getting there. As soon as we level up to about 80, we're going to start moving all of this around and start looking for the right aspects. But right now, we're just power leveling straight to 80. Moving on for our boons, um, I have started to use wariness for the damage reduction. I've bonded with the eagle here so that we can use max life for the overpower and so that we can also get some critical strike damage. Uh, next one down, we're using bolster, which is going to give us some um, uh, fortify for your maximum life when you use the defensive skill. And then down the bottom, I'm using every 20th kill will cause your next earth skill to overpower. And we are using earth skills, so it's just another form of overpower, which is fantastic. Jumping into the skill tree, I am using Winshi for two points just as a basic. We're not going to use a basic on this end game build, but for now we will because this is leveling. Uh, we go down and take one here so that we can take more, so core skills cost more but deal more damage. Pulverize, we max it out. I'm using the enemies overpowered or stunned for two seconds. You can swap over and use um, enemies deal less damage, but either way, it's, uh, it's some sort of defensive which is going to happen for you. Down here, we've lifted our critical strike chance against close enemies. Uh, we've then gone for damage reduction while in werebear form. We're using Ancestral Fortitude to increase our resistances. We're using Vigilance so that you gain damage reduction while using a defensive skill. Uh, Earthen Bulwark, we go up one just so that it makes us unstoppable. Blood Howl all the way down to Innate for the Spirit. Nothing in here as yet, but at the end game we will be using some of these and we will be actually taking advantage of a specific aspect that gives us more damage while we have companions, but we're not using that while leveling. Uh, next down we go Earth Skills, deal more damage to slowed, stunned or immobilized. We do stun, we do immobilize, we pulverize, so they'll deal more damage on the second hit and onwards. We're also using that while you have Fortify, your Earth Skills deal more damage. That's more damage again. I'm not using Critical Strikes Fortify you because we have Fortify coming through a number of different avenues. This Mending will mean that you receive more healing from all sources. This will mean that Blood Howl will heal you better when you roar. And also uh, later on you'll see another one which will have a little bit of healing that comes up. 
and then when you remain in web air form for at least 16 seconds your next non-defensive will overpower now we don't really remain in web air form very often constantly because we don't have insatiable fury yet but if we can pulverize a lot more often we can stay in web air a lot more often and that just gives us an overpower um, an extra overpower so that's why i've got the points in here at the moment Later on, we'll be swapping to Neurotoxin and going down here for Invenom so that we get the uh, bonus 30x multiplicative critical strike damage. Uh, we're using Trample, again, for Unstoppable all the way through to Savage for the Spirit. I'm using Petrify, and I'm using this all the way through for now because killing an enemy grants us 25 Spirit. We are throwing in Defiance for the multiplicative damage to Elites, and we've got one point which we threw in here just so that every Nature Magic skill heals us. Now, as we go back, yes, we've got some shape-shifting stuff, and yes, not everything is Nature Magic, but you will see that Pulverize is Nature Magic, and because Pulverize is our main skill, as we use it, uh, we'll heal as it as it consumes spirit. Now, Hunter Zenith has thrown some points in here for us. If I take everything out, you'll see that it's three and one. Um, but I'm topping these up. Reason being is that I want to have the, when you shapeshift into a werewolf or a werebear, you're getting damage reduction against elites, which is great. And then also here, when you shapeshift or when you transform into a different form, you deal 25x increased damage. And we come down to the end using Ursine Strength. So Ursine Strength is basically 20x uh, maximum life, which is great for overpower. And then also gives you, while healthy, you deal increased damage and increased overpower damage. So Ursine Strength is the best thing that I can find to use while leveling here. Later on, we may swap to Earthen Might. We may swap to one of these others, but we'll see. Um, right now, Ursine Strength is the best thing we've got. Going into the Paragon. Now, this is just an absolute mess right now. The only thing is I'm just trying to use up all of my points. We're going to throw in the last two that we just got here because we're trying to come over to the Glyph Passage. But... I've thrown in Fang and Claw, one, because it was the absolute first glyph that I got, but two, because um, it gives us a bonus to all magic nodes, and the magic nodes here give us some damage, so we're going to, as soon as that hits 15, we're going to get damage out here, damage here, damage here, and then we're going to get some resistance here, here, and here, which is just going to give us some resistances. Um, I've taken everything down the bottom here for max life and armor, just for now, so that we've got a little bit more tankiness, we've got a little bit more life, and we do a little bit more damage across all these things here. And the very first board, while you're leveling, the very first board, guys, this is really important that you want to go into, is you want to go into Ancestral Guidance. I know people want damage. I know people want to be able to smash. We'll be able to do that later. We called him Smashy in Season 2. He is definitely Smashy Smashy in Season 3. But we're going to get there at the end game. This is a leveling build. This is why we're doing it this way. After spending 75 Spirit, you deal increased damage. But the reason we've gone into this board is... For this little node up here, you get maximum spirit and you also start to get spirit on kill. Now on top of everything else that's happening, the spirit on kill is going to hold up a substantial amount of you being able to level out that spirit curve. It is fantastic. Then we come up here, we take the maximum spirit up here as well and we take some maximum life. That gives you stronger overpower, but you'll also have more spirit. I've come down here for the core skill damage. We're just gonna use that so that pulverize as our core skill deals more damage. And then when we flick up here, um, you can see we've got resistances on one side and with Harmony, we've got core skill damage on the other. So we're gonna wanna boost rare nodes. Um, I don't know exactly 100% what we're gonna use just yet, but I think it's going to be something that has a rare node boost in the bonus. Um, so if we look around down here and just do a really quick theory craft on it, here we go. Uh, you and your companions, deal 10x increased non-physical damage. So we deal 10x non-physical damage and we get a boost to all rare nodes that this one reaches. Keeper will probably be the one that we throw in there. We may even throw in Outmatch by the look of this. So Outmatch will grant uh, to rare nodes and will also mean we deal 16x increased physical damage to non-elites and bosses. So everyone but elites, uh, which is not bad because bosses dealing more damage, really, really good. Non-elites is basically everyone on the board, really, really good. And when the elites come well, we just smash up a couple extra times. But as long as we're killing things really quickly, we're going to get spirit back on kill. We're going to get a lot of uh, extra damage and extra stuff that's happening. So look, let's run a, another quick one just so you can see. Um, we're not going to run the entire thing. We're just going to start at the beginning just so you can see a little bit of what's going on and how this is working. As a leveling build, this is a lot of fun. It's helping, you know, with spirit cost reductions. You've got a lot of damage. You've got a lot of tankiness. I know that these monsters are only a couple of levels above me, but we are a leveling build. We're not trying to, you know, build something out at level 65 to be running Nightmare 100 dungeons. It's just not going to work. 
Um, you can see, look here, trample, we're almost full. We just start smashing things and our spirit is going down, but it's not going down substantially quick. So as we kill things, you'll see it pop up a little bit again. Um, we try and just work our way through and build up groups because the more that we have behind us, the more we smash and the more we can smash in one hit, the more that we'll be able to keep our spirit up. Um, what you're going to be looking for on some of your gear as you're leveling is don't start looking for everything to be absolutely perfect. Look for things like spirit cost reduction and look for things like resource generation so that when you blood hell you get more resource and so that everything actually costs less when you're hitting. Um, the best way to play this is exactly as I'm doing here. Don't just walk in, see one enemy and smash. You'll run out of spirit, you'll run out of spirit really, really quick. Try and get yourself through, use Earthen Bulwark, um, bring it up, make sure that you've got people behind you, smash an entire gang, and that will allow you to keep your spirit levels high. So you can see here as I go into a single damage, my spirit starts to drop off very, very quickly. And then we have to use things like Trample, but when there's gangs behind you, like that one was just there, you smash and your spirit stays the same. If not, it actually goes up, which is really, really good. Um, I'll show you a couple of the other tests that we do. So as we're running through, if we use Blood Howl and then we smash, everything's going to be a lot cheaper. Blood Howl's lifting us up. You can see it giving us more spirit. There's a bunch of guys here. We're not going to hit them yet. Here we go. We're going to gather them behind us and bang, and our spirit stays up. Bang, and our spirit stays up. This is the way to run this build. If you ever feel like you're in trouble, Earthen Bulwark, just throw it straight on. It'll give you a little bit of tankiness while a whole bunch of enemies are around you, and it will let you survive a lot better. Um, but with the tankiness and with what we've done in this build, it's pretty tanky as it is. There you go, big group, smash them out. You just see everything's dying, even the, the few elites that are there. These guys are a 74, so it's not that they're just a few levels above. They are nine levels above, and we're running through this fairly easily. Um, which is really great to see on a build this early. It just means that when we start getting into our later end game and we start getting into tier 100s and we start getting into the bigger dungeons and bosses, we will be able to start one-shotting things. We will be able to start using this as a fantastic end game build. And if we can start to build in things towards the end here, where we have a lot more movement speed, where we have things like trample helping us out, where we have things that will move us through the dungeon quicker, we may even have a pretty decent looking gauntlet build here. So I'm gonna just finish smashing out everyone that's in this room. Just quickly get us out of here so that we can go back to a town just quickly. That's the build, that's how it's going. I'll have the Mobilitics build up or the Mobilitics link up with the build as it is for now. So as we start going into level 70, level 80 and into the you know level 80 plus into level 90 for the end game build, uh, I will start updating the Paragon board on that as well. Um, when you're running through things here, when you're looking for helmets, if you don't have like Vasily's Pair or anything that I have, you want something that has maximum spirit and cooldown reduction for helmets. Um, as you come across into your spears, you want things where you want a staff more than anything else, and you want it to have crowd control damage, core skill damage, critical strike damage, and overpower damage, or overpower with wear bear skill damage. Um, that's what you're looking for. So uh, the other thing is shockwave aspect is really, really important. You are not going to really feel powerful until you get that shockwave aspect. Um, that's what's gonna make the build really, really strong. That's what's gonna make the build actually start to hit really hard. Um, and you'll see here, I've kept one last thing here because we have damage reduction, we have spirit cost reduction, which is huge, and natural disaster. Now this is only a 694 when I'm wearing a 718. The 718 is giving me armor and a bit of movement speed. I'm happy to get rid of that armor and I'm happy to get rid of that natural earth for a bit of natural disaster. But as you can see, the build's great. This is the way it's going. We're leveling, we're gonna take you through. There'll be upcoming videos in the coming days. You'll probably see me at about 75, 80. You'll see me again in the mid nineties. And then once we hit a hundred and once we get this Paragon board down pat and we start to actually branch it out, I'm looking to build in six to eight, between six and eight Paragon boards and glyphs. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this build. This has been a lot, a lot of fun to be able to start with. This is going to be a great one once it hits 100. I've been Sabotage. Thank you for reaching out to DPS HQ. Please like, subscribe, and share for the videos. It helps us out a substantial amount, guys. We really enjoy making these builds, and we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.